water. Oh, he was way down there by the snow, way down. There we are. Ooh, pretty fish, huh? That's the way to start the day. Now we got a beautiful summer afternoon, and <clears throat> we're gonna keep things real simple here. We're gonna do a little wading, the river's down, but we're gonna talk mainly about bait secrets for summertime catfish. And I suppose there's about a dozen things or so we could talk about, but we're gonna keep it real simple. There's some simple tricks to hooking and to rigging, and uh, we wanna talk about the, a little bit about the different bait types. And the end result, of course, is fish like this one right here. We are gonna keep some later, aren't we? There goes one. Hey, there you go, Toad! Ho, ho! Drag him out of there! He's coming. Try to keep him out of the weeds in the woods. Oh, okay. Look at that. Just a good eater. Uh-huh, uh-huh. just swing in there. Okay. He's just right for an eater. This one took some cut bait. Cut bait this time of the year is one of the best baits that there is to use. As long as you use bait that's good and fresh, either on ice or alive, and freshly cut. So the good body juices flow down into these brush piles where they can taste and smell it and come on out and grab it. I tell you what, Toad, why don't you uh, show them what we mean by cut bait? Okay. The first thing, of course, is that... We'll show them a little one, and let's show them a bigger one. Okay, all we're talking about is that these are freshly killed and put on ice. We've got a sucker there, we've got a chub, we've got a shiner. And when we're cutting the bait, we're cutting the head off, and we're cutting the tail off. And the reason we cut the tail off is simply because that tail catches the current and makes your bait twist around. Then, very vitally important, is just one time through the bait, and you leave that hook exposed, because so oftentimes people try to hide the hook in the bait, the fish takes the bait, you set, and instead of setting into the fish, you set back into the bait. Now with a bigger bait like that, <clears throat> all you're gonna do is fillet the side off of it, and you can use that. We're gonna cut that side in half, and we're gonna cut the tail off here, and then we're gonna chunk the rest of that. <clears throat> and one thing that's important is how you hook this up. You got your hook handy there? You bet. Okay, don't hook this thing in the middle. Hook it right in one of the corners so when it lays in the current, it doesn't twist all around like that. It just lays nice and straight in the current. And again, you've got your hook exposed. That's cut bait. Fresh flowing, wonderful juices. The catfish uh, tastes it in the water, comes for it, and he gets it. Probably, I would say, one of the finest catfish baits you could ever find. And the thing about the cut bait is, is that it's so readily available, fish love it so much, I don't think that there's a finer bait that you can get for most catfishing situations. You never want to go catfishing without a steady supply, a good supply of cut bait. Now, something touched my bait, but it was just a small one. How do you know, how do you know it's a small one? The little ones just peck, they kind of mouth it. The big ones come up, scoop it up, and run. I don't know, we've been here 10 minutes, but five minutes without a bite, but it's such a good spot. Why don't, uh, you want to dig out the blood? All right. I think if uh, we might be able to call a couple out of there, we'll do a little chumming too. Well, I got some good fresh blood hit away down there somewhere. Whose blood are we talking about there, Toad? Well, this is some good fresh chicken blood I got the other day in a kill plant. I've got it all stripped out. I got it all prepared ready for catfish. I think what I'm gonna do here is pour the top off of it, let it drift down into this snag. A lot of times that'll turn them on a little bit, kind of like feeding sharks. Kind of wakes them up. Now I've got a treble hook here, a piece of tag line. Now I gotta find me a nice, there's a nice strip. Take that strip of blood, wrap it around the hook shank, round and around and around until I've got it all the way around and used up. Take my tag line, around the strip of blood, hook the end around the barb, snug it up, 
And there I've got a tempting little morsel that'll turn any catfish on. Yeah, but that's true. But I tell you what, oftentimes when we get them turned on with that blood, they'll still hit the cut bait. Cut bait keeps right on working. So I'm gonna work that right alongside Toad's blood. You gonna give him a little more chum? Ooh, that looks good. Hang on to your reel handles. Well, there's no fish here, we'd have one. We'd just as well uh, lift the anchor. All right, I agree, I agree. Let's keep moving. Check it out downstream. Fish going. Watch out. Oh, he's got her. There! Whoa! Ooh, ho, ho, ho. I'll get out of your way. Flathead. Oh, it's a flathead! Nice flathead. Holy smoke. You got him? All right, go one more time. Oh, look at the old mom on him. There you go. We haven't caught one of those in a couple of years here. You know, it's not all that usual to catch, you know, we're fishing with dead cut bait and these flatheads love live bait and we're fishing with dead bait. It's not that you can't catch them, it's just that they really prefer live bait. You know, oftentimes we will take live bait with us when we're specifically fishing for these flatheads, but in a situation like this, it's really too difficult to keep live bait uh, in good shape all day long. And, and to tell you the truth, I didn't know there was that many flatheads in this section. We're gonna keep this guy. There we go. That's a beautiful fish. You know, when, when Toad and I hit the uh, river in the summertime, we always make sure that we have two classes of baits with us. And one class of bait, which we've really already shown you, and that's a, uh, a class of bait that what might be indigenous to the area that you happen to be fishing. And that's the primary bait choice for us in most instances. We're talking about uh, a sucker that might be swimming through this stream right here, and we're, we're using dead sucker. Uh, in other times of the year, you might go to a crayfish. Uh, frogs are very popular bait. Grasshoppers can be good at different times. And then, of course, uh, to come back to, to do a bait like this, at, at certain times, you might want to go to a live bait instead of a dead bait. That's one class of baits. The other class of baits are artificial type things. We call them attractor baits, and we already showed you one a little bit earlier. The attractor bait was that we use, uh, we're using down the river just a little bit was blood. But there's lots of them. Uh, you have dip baits and what are commonly called stink baits that you can inject into plastic tubes or the dip baits so often you'll use a little sponge like this and you'll dip the stuff into the runny, gooey, vile concoction. You'll cast it out and fish it for five minutes and then have to rebait. Uh, in Europe, well, in the United States first, I guess the, the actually the most popular attractor bait are paste baits like this one right here. You uh, pull a piece off and you wad it on your hook. It fishes for maybe 10 minutes and you have to rebait once again. They come in all kinds of flavors. In Europe, something that's probably gonna hap going to happen here at some time, they use extracts and you'll take and make your own paste and you'll put an extract in the paste and uh, wonderful attractor. This one happens to be a vanilla thing. It's actually used for carp in, uh, in England, <clears throat> but you can get them in anchovy flavors, almost any flavor that you want to. So when we head out, we almost always try to have at least two basic classes of bait. One bait, like the cut bait, a bait that's indigenous to the area, and the other bait, like the blood, which is an attractor bait. And you can hardly go wrong if you stay with those two classes of baits. No bites, huh? Something thumped me, picked me up. Now he's taking line. He's a good one. He's a heavy fish. Get him up. Oh, man. Can't get him up. I sure like the way they cut the water like that. It's pretty. Oh, oh, watch out. Watch. Oh, no, it's a flathead. It's a great big flathead. Holy smokes. Two flatheads out of the same hole. Easy does it on him. Oh, he's, a... he's got power. Yes, he does. Oh, beautiful fish. That thing's going to go 20 pounds. That is, 
I tell you what, that's one of the most powerful fish I've ever seen here. Oh, it's pretty. I'll get him. Gonna, here, I got a glove. Bring him over here. I'll get him by the lip. Easy. He's a good one. Take yes, him he in. is. Keep his head down. Keep his head down. Well, I got the glove on. Keep his head down. Easy. There we go. There we go. Hey. Hey. I'm big flathead catfish. I overestimated he's not 20, but well, he's gonna go 15. We've gotta come back here at night with live bait. There's gotta be some real horses in here. You know, that's a good point. We've been talking about the two classes of baits for summertime catfish, and we've got both types with us. We've got attractor baits, and we've got uh, the indigenous baits, but we really need live bait for these flatheads. We figured we were only gonna catch channel cats. Quite a surprise. Who's prettier? <laughs> Boy, she's 